of Pentecostal church where we believe you can be rescued, redeemed, and restored at this time in the hand of the Master's work. Praise the Lord, everyone. We can do a little better than that. Praise the Lord, everyone. It is good to be in church this morning. Good to be in the Lord's house today. I know we've got some that are still making their way in, but we need to get into the announcements. As you know, the QR code that is up there right now, if you want to have the announcements with you to go, you can take a photo of them uh, or pull your camera out and scan the QR code. It will take you to the link. Uh, it will go to your phone. You can screenshot the announcements when they pull up. Very easy to do. You can have those. You can do it from right, right where you sit. Also, prayer meeting, 730 this Tuesday night. Everybody say 730. All right, if you're here at 730, you will not miss prayer. Uh, and I'm going to help some of you brothers out. How many of you men in the church need help every now and then? I figured you did. We're going to have men's Bible study this Tuesday at 7. Tuesday at 7. And so all you got to do, you'll already be here for prayer. Amen? It got real quiet when I said that. We'll, ha we'll have our, our little meal and, and everything, and then we'll go right into prayer with everybody else. We'll come over here and pray with everyone else. Also, again, remember every month our youth prayer is the first Tuesday night of every month. Also, our Friday night prayer group. Oh, we met, uh, did our Zoom prayer meeting this Friday night. We had, had a great crowd, had a great group. Uh, if you want to be on the prayer team and you've signed up for that, uh, Sister Harold sent out a link. Uh, through a group uh, a group thing and if you don't know how to work that I know some of you didn't know how to work it because you left the group Now that that's out there Because if you're in the group I can see who leaves the group So if you signed on to be on the prayer group you can't leave the group and still be a part of the group So I challenge sister Harold go to the ones that have left the group because they didn't know about the group Explain to them how it works. Also, if you need help working Zoom, because it can be complicated how to get on, how to do, she'll help you. And we had a tremendous prayer meeting Friday night. Also, our addiction recovery uh, group met Thursday night, had a great crowd, had a great group. Uh, I know we had three guests uh, in, in that group, very excited about that. Right now, as we speak, Brother Crowder, and Sister Brandon, that y'all finished? Just finished counting a thousand and some odd uh, door flyers to go out into the community. They have to be separated for the post office. They just finished that out. We we're about to canvas South Columbiana and Shelby uh, hitting a thousand households. Amen? Amen. We believe. Come on, somebody, get a little Holy Ghost in you this morning. Amen. We are in our 21 days of prayer and fasting. Amen. And if you're fasting, say amen. And if you're, you've got a 24-hour fast coming up this week, be aware of it. Know it's happening and pay attention. As Sister Harold sends out the invitations and the information, make sure you jump on board with that. Also, men's Bible study, I mentioned that tonight. Girls and boys Bible study are Wednesday night this week. So bring your kids. Make sure they're here on Wednesday night. When we separate for music, They'll go into their places, and then there is a youth event, January the 22nd, after church. Make sure your young people are here that Sunday. Volunteers are always needed, church, always, always needed around the church. And we live stream to Facebook, upload to YouTube after every service, so you can go back and watch, you can share that. Uh, and then Givelify, we use Givelify if you would like to do online giving. Otherwise, we're going to give here in the sanctuary, just like we've always have. Amen. Grab an envelope and you can give that way. All right, church, we're getting ready to go to the Lord in prayer. I'd like to ask you to stand to your feet this morning. Come on, make a little noise as you stand up. So I know I'm not raising the dead. All right, I'm going to bring my brother up here, Brother Shane, and he's going to lead us in prayer today. Praise the Lord. How's everybody doing this morning? Good. Good to be in the house of the Lord today. Um, how many of you are really glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. How many is really glad to be here? Amen. Oh, uh, you know, I, I, I dealt with Brother Bean this morning, and, and I've had, 
I've been battling something for the last couple of weeks, and the Lord's laid something on my heart this morning. How many of you know that we're looking at two times people right here this morning? Two, two vessels that God's really used, and he's blessing. But you know, it takes more than what people see behind closed doors to get up and get a message together and have a burden and have a full-time job, you know, and take the burden of the church and do things that, that people really don't see. It's not getting up being a bed of roses every day, being a pastor and pastor's wife. You know, there's things that they deal with at home life. There's things they deal with here. There's phone calls that go through that people don't know about. You know, and, and so this morning, you know, I know we're here to welcome God in, but, you know, I feel this morning, if y'all will step down, I, would, I, I ask God to step down this morning. Can I get some of the Holy Ghost filled brothers and sisters this morning to pray this morning? You know, let's get behind our pastor and his pastor's, our pastor's wife this morning and pray for him today that God would begin to bless them and use them for his kingdom and, and for what he would have them to do. But, you know, they, 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 they can go through things that we never know anything about this morning. So we can all, all around the house today. Let's bring our pastor and pastor's wife today up to the Lord today. God, we ask you, Lord, today, God, this service. Lord, we ask you, Lord, right now to move, God, on our pastor and our pastor's wife today, God. We ask you, Lord, God, to anoint them today, God. Use them today, God. We ask you, Lord, right now, God, to speak peace, God, over them today, God. We ask you, God, to encourage them in the Holy Ghost today, God. But we ask you, Lord, right now to begin to move upon them today, God. Touch their children today, God. But we ask you, Lord, right now, Lord, you know, God, the need, God, the day that's going forth today, God. Lord, hallelujah, we ask you, Lord, right now, let the presence of the Holy Ghost, God, to begin to flow right now, God, over these two people today, God. But we ask you, Lord, right now to begin to move, God, in the Holy Ghost. And, Lord, have your way today, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We worship you today, God. We thank you for it today. We claim it today, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If there's anybody else today that would like to come up for prayer, the Holy Ghost is here today. God, I'll meet you here today. Hallelujah, Lord, we praise you right now, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He didn't do it, so I'm going to do it. I want you to close your eyes right now. As she just play something soft. I want you right now that the Lord put a name in your mind. Let the Lord put a name in your mind. Get that name. And I want you to take 30 so open your eyes, take 30 seconds. I want you to go across this church, find somebody, shake their hand. If it's appropriate, you can hug, you, hug their neck, tell them you love them. Tell them you're glad they're here. And I'm not just the, not the normal gossiping and, and carrying on. I mean you love them. I am praying for you. If, if, if you got something against me, I'm sorry. If I've had something against you, I'm sorry. Go do that right now. Go do that. Find somebody right now. Come on, the Lord is going to lead you. Go do it right now. Right now, go find somebody. Right now. If we can do this, if you can do this, you'll tear down a wall. If you can do this, you can tear down a burden. You can tear down a stronghold of the enemy. Just do it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Go around the church. Find somebody. Find a brother. Find a sister. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost beginning to move in this house. In the name of Jesus, I pray right now, God, that you could tear down every wall, every stronghold of the enemy. Find somebody. You haven't found somebody yet. Find somebody. If you're waiting on somebody to find you, you go find them. You go love them right now. In the name of Jesus. You watch how God will begin to restore your life if you'll love somebody. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody begin to thank God right now because he's moving in the place. He's moving in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. You know, before you can go to the altar and repent, if you got all against your brother, you got to say, I'm sorry. You got to let it go. Amen. They're still doing it. Man, there must have been a lot of all against the brother in here this morning. A lot of love here now. Y'all ready to have church now? Are you ready to have church now? Amen. Let's worship the Lord. Sister, come lead us in song.
never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget the never. He's got so much for me. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. He's got so much for me. I cannot tell it all. so much for me. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. He's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. He has taken my sins away. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Since I lay my burdens down. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay my burdens down. Hold on, sister, hold on. We want to. We want to. We want to so bad. We want to pray so bad, but we just worry about what they're going to think. Brother David, you can help me, can't you? Come on up here. Come on, right, that's far enough. When we get to sing it, we used to sing this riding home from work, didn't we? How'd we do it? Glory, glory, hallelujah. Come on, help me. With my hand on the wheel. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Help me. Since I lay my burdens down. Some of you need to learn how to pray. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I've lay my burdens down. Somebody help, glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay my burdens down, well, glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay my burdens down, hallelujah, glory, glory, hallelujah, come on, do you know how to pray, since I lay come on, David, you know how to praise dance. Hallelujah. Well, since I lay my burdens down, well, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Since I lay my burdens down, well, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Since I lay my burdens down, help me. Well, glory, glory. Get out in the aisle. Learn to praise. Learn to worship. My burdens down. Well, glory, glory. Hallelujah. As I lay my burdens down. Well, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Since I lay my burdens down. Well, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Since I lay. Somebody get out of your seat. Glory, Begin glory. to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, David. If Since you dance before the Lord, they I don't care. Down. They ain't going to work. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Since I lay my burdens down. Well, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Since I lay my burdens down. Glory, glory. There's nothing like the Holy Ghost. There is nothing like the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost. 
do this in some other church, but in the Pentecostal Apostolic Church, we're going to praise. We're going to act like fools of the Holy Ghost. Yes, he's alive. I know God's not dead. He's alive. Cause I feel him in my hands. I feel him in my feet. I feel him in my heart. I feel him all over me. Oh, God's not dead. He's alive. Down just a little bit. Help me. That's good. Y'all doing good. How many of you this week? Turn your radio up, and you was on some ungodly station, and you got to thumping. Come on, don't lie. You got to fight beating around. Or the game was on, you got loud. You walked up in God's house this morning, and you thought you was going to get by. I'm sick and tired of getting by. I'm, some of you are dying lost because you've got by. You've got by. You've got by depressed. You've got by addicted to drugs. You've gotten by addicted to narcotics. You have gotten by addicted to antidepressants. I am tired of getting by. I'm tired of you getting by. You need to get on fire in the Holy Ghost this morning. You need to get on fire. I Look at me. I, am, I can play the drums, but other than that, I have no rhythm. But I can act a fool for the Lord. I can act a fool for the Lord. I can act a fool for Jesus because God's not dead. He's alive. I know God's not dead. He's alive. I know God's not dead. He's alive. Oh, my God. Not dead. No. He's alive. I feel him in my head. Yes. I feel him in my feet. Yes. I feel him in my heart. Oh, yes. I feel him all over me. I know God. Sister Rachel, show him how to shout. Well, now, he's alive. God's not dead. He's alive. I know God's not dead. Well, my Lord, he's alive. I feel him in my head. I feel him in my feet. I feel him in my heart. I feel him all over me. God's not dead. Now you can sing glory, glory. Hallelujah, since I lay my burdens down. Oh, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Yes, my burdens down. Oh, glory, glory. Hallelujah, since I lay my burdens down. Oh, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Tell me what do you think about Jesus? He's alright. Tell me what do you think about Jesus? He's alright. Tell me what do you think about Jesus? He's alright. He's alright. He's alright. He's alright. Well, what do you think about Jesus? He's alright. Tell me what do you think about Jesus? He's alright. Well, now what do you think about Jesus? He's alright, he's alright, he's alright, he's alright. You know my God, he's a good God. Yes, he is. I know God is still a good God. Yes, he is. Well, my God is still a good God. Yes, he is. Well, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Well, yes. yes, is. Well, yes. Is. well, well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everybody, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, everybody, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise Come the on. Lord. You got to get out of carnality this morning. You got to learn to pray and worship in the spirit. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, everybody, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. What do you think about Jesus? He's alright. Oh, what do you think about Jesus? He's alright. Well, now, what do you think about Jesus? He's alright. He's alright. He's alright. Yeah. He's alright. You know, my God is still a 
good God. Yes, he is. Well, my God, he's still a good God. Yes, he is. Well, my God, he's still a good God. Yes, he is. Well, yes, yes he, he is. is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Well, my God, he's still a good God. Yes, he is. You know, my God, he's still a good God. Yes, he is. Oh, my God, he's been a good God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on and worship the Lord. Come on and worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Come on, everybody. Worship the Lord. Come on, Sister Rachel, hurry, get up here. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. We're bringing a song way back this morning. Way back this morning. Now, if you're not moving, if you're not praising and worshiping God yet, you probably ain't going to get what I'm going to preach. It'd be best if you just got Jesus now. Amen. Because it's going to help you receive the word later. Amen. I come this morning to preach some deliverance in this house this morning. Amen. The yoke is broke by the anointing. Everybody that shouted already said amen. I'm waiting for the rest of you. The yoke is broken by the anointing. Just help me, sister. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. The hope that Satan held me. the Lord. Are y'all ready to hear the word of the Lord? I need 
need my father. Brother Bean, I'm going to need you up here. Now, I did, we've not practiced this. You get on the front row and help me. All my little boys, or all my, y'all look what I got this morning. Brother Bean, sit down right there. You remember what we learned on Friday in the class? All right, don't, they're loaded, so don't shoot. Do it just like we did Friday. Just like we did Friday. All right. Stand for the reading of the word. If you're not already standing. Amen. Don't let anybody distract you this morning and keep you from what God wants to do in your life. I came this morning to, we hadn't got there yet, it'll come in Luke 4 and 18. I've come this morning to preach deliverance. Amen. This morning I came to preach deliverance. I told the music team yesterday, I said, I'm preaching on deliverance. Pray about it. And they prayed about it. And I'm telling you, we have felt the Holy Ghost this morning. If you hadn't felt the Holy Ghost, you have resisted what God wants to do. But God's about to break free some things if you'll allow Him this morning. Amen. Now, I'm going to do my best to move in the Spirit this morning. This is not my normal modus operandi. I'm more of a teacher, preacher. But I, I know God wants to move and He wants to touch some people this morning. So I'm just going to ask you, uh, as I try to follow the Lord, you do the same. Amen. And when it was all me having to preach and stuff, y'all was all amen. But when you got to follow, y'all wasn't amen in his heart. Amen. All right. I want you to go in your Bibles to Luke chapter 4, verse 18. When you have it, say amen. The Bible says, this is Jesus quoting the Old Testament, but he stood up and he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, the recovery of sight to the blind. Mm. Mm. There no, there's no blind people here this morning. But the Lord has just quickened me that there are some spiritually blind, that the enemy has put blinders over you this morning. And he wants to remove those blinders off of you this morning. That you have become blind, but he wants to open your sight. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Praise God, you may be seated. Now, everything I'm going to do my best to attempt to do by the help of the Holy Ghost today, the power of the Lord, the Spirit of God, is to do, and do so with love. Amen. I want to do it with love. I want to teach and I want to preach and I want to minister with love. But I'm, I'm going to tell you that I, I'm not here to mess around with you today. If the Lord quickens me, I'm going to call you out. If the Lord moves on me, I'm going to point at you. I'm going to tell you why. And this man that I'm going to quote this morning is not even a believer like we are. And this should quicken, this should convict us if we can't have this same drive in our spirits. Charles Spurgeon said this. If sinners be damned, at least let them leap to hell over our dead bodies. And if they perish, let them perish with our arms wrapped about their knees, imploring them to stay. If hell must be filled, let it be filled in the teeth of our exertion, and let not one go unwarned and unprayed for. So I want to ask you right now to bow your heads. We're going to pray right now over this word and over the people here that the word of God would take effect and hearts would be convicted. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I come to you right now. Lord, I bind every hindrance. Lord, I speak against every spirit of blindness, every spirit, Lord, that would exalt itself against the knowledge of who you are, Jesus. Lord, we rebuke a confusion Lord, we silence the voice of the enemy that would speak into the lives. We pray for a spirit of prophecy in the house. We pray, God, that there be a spirit of liberty that would be turned loose in the house this morning. We bind all of these uh, uh, spirits that would come against us. And, Lord, we ask that your spirit have free reign in our lives in Jesus' name. And the church says, Amen. Church, if you're going to be delivered, if you're going to be delivered, you're going to have to step out of the captivity that you're in. 
There's some people that you felt the Holy Ghost this morning. There's some people that in spite of me hooping and hollering and exerting myself and heaving and dry heaving, you sit there and you talk to the neighbor next to you and you're distracted and you laugh because Sister Donna got to shouting or you laugh because me or Sister Bean got to shouting or one of the ones got to shouting and you, you, you lost sight that God was trying to bring somebody across the Red Sea. Well, you, let me tell you something. When Moses crossed on dry land with the Israelites, Miriam and everybody danced as God was setting them free. Don't be the one idiot that's still stuck inside the river because he's watching everybody else on the banks have a good time and you're so dumb you don't know to get out of the water. Hear what I'm saying this morning. You've got to be willing to get out. I'm going to take you to the Apostle Peter in about the 12th chapter. He was locked up in prison. Anybody ever been locked up in prison? Don't say it amen out loud. Just hold that. He was locked in prison. He was about to be killed. About to be killed. You know, it's hard to come back from that. It's hard to come back from that. Except God raised you up. You, that's, that's sort of like a one-way ticket. Verse 7. And the, behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side, raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. Get up fast. And his chains fell off his hands. As I begin to pray and minister this morning and speak to you, I'm going to give opportunities for some of you to come forward. And your command is to get up quickly, and your chains are going to come off. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself. Bind on thy sandals, and so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. That kind of reminds me of the last uh, of the Passover meal, where they had to eat that Passover meal with their staff in their hand and their sandals on their feet. Why? Because when God says it's time to get up out of Egypt and the land of sin, you be ready to go. Some of you right now need to make up your mind when the minister gives me the word that it's my time to come, I'll be ready to get up off my seat and move. Come on. And he went out. And followed him, and wist not that it was true, which was done by the angels, but he thought it was a vision. But even you may be in a daze right now. You may not even think, God, is this really happening? But just keep moving. And, the, and when they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to the hem of his own accord. And they went out. He kept, somebody say he kept going. And he passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed. So now the glory, glory to God. There's going to come a time today when the glory of this, what you have felt today, is going to lift. But you still got to keep moving. Listen to what Peter did. And Peter, when he was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel. And he hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered. When the glory lifts off of you, you better make sure that you keep trying to get to where the people of God are. He's going to give you some steps for deliverance. You've got to get up. You've got to march forward. You've got to then come to a realization it's not a dream, baby, but you are free. Can I get amen there? Who the Son has set free? Come on, we're going to have to get loose this morning. If you're crossing your arms, uncross them. I want you to get loose to where you can praise and you can cry out and you can worship God. Realize that when you are free, you're free. And then last, do not turn around and go backwards. Peter could have went right back into the cell. He could have sat back down in his imprisonment. But instead, he marched toward the people of God. God has called you out of darkness into the light. We'll take you down to Moses and Exodus because we're talking about deliverance. Exodus 5 and 22. And Moses returned to the Lord and said, Lord, wherefore hast thou so evil entreated this people? God, why are you picking on your people? You ever feel like God's picking on you? That one honest person. 
Why is it that thou hast sent me? Now you're questioning why you're even serving God. For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in thy name, he hath done evil to this people, neither hast thou delivered the people at all. I'm going to help you right now. I'm talking about delivering somebody by the power of God today from carnal things. Is anybody here, just be honest, be honest, do you need deliverance from something in your life? Anybody brave enough to raise their hand? All right, that's good. Got a thought, good. And there's a few other liars that hadn't raised their hand yet, but that's okay. All right, carnal things. Everything that you need to be delivered from is carnal. Got to have more amens than that because I think you're asleep. Amen, you carnal things. Carnal things will not release you from their grasp. They will not turn loose of you voluntarily. So Moses, quit blaming God because Pharaoh hasn't let the people go yet. Amen? Moses, you better be in this for the long haul because it may get worse before it gets better. But if you'll make up your mind you're coming out, you're coming out. And Pharaoh won't have much to say about it. He may want to keep you, but if God says, I'll bring them out, and they say, yes, Lord, I'll get up out of Egypt, and I'll walk into what you have for me, there's no gate in Egypt that can hold the people of God. You've got to be prepared to walk out of Egypt. You've got to be prepared to walk out of sinful activity. If you'll walk away from the lifestyle of sin, Something will change almost instantly. Instantly. As long as the Hebrews were in Egypt, what were they? Oh, somebody say it louder. They were slaves in Egypt. It didn't matter that they come from Abraham. As long as they were in Egypt, they were slaves. And as long as they stayed there, that's what they'd be. But once they got on the other side of the river, once they got on the other side of a wilderness, once they got out of that old mindset, they went from being slaves and they went from being wanderers do they went to be an all of a sudden an army that all of the kingdoms of Canaan were afraid of? Come on, stand to your feet this morning. Hear what I'm saying right now. If you'll make up your mind that you'll come out of Egypt, as soon as you step out, you become an army. Make up your mind. Somebody, I want you to lift your hands. I want you to begin to pray for God to make something else out of you. I can't preach against the flesh. I'm trying to lead you in the spirit. Oh, come on, somebody. Begin to ask God to move. Ask God to change your way of thinking. Lord, I don't want to think like a slave any longer. Lord, I don't want to think like I'm in captivity anymore. God, I want to be free and separated. You could be seated a minute. I want to take you to 1 Kings. Now I'm about to start dealing with some things people are going through this morning. And I'm talking about the prophet Elijah. 1 Kings 19 and 4. But he himself went a journey into the, a day, uh, went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree and requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. Who ever told you you were any better than your daddy? God can't use you until you realize that you ain't ready. God cannot use you until you realize that on your own you're nothing. God cannot use you until you realize that you're nothing but clay. You need God. You need the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. Well, look, and I, I only read you one scripture, but I'll give you the story. In short, he told God he had failed, and it was the only, I'm the only one left, God, that serves you. I'm the only one left. It's just me. And God worked through Elijah, and he, he immediately, he, he, he immediately, when uh, the enemy realized that God had worked through Elijah and all of this stuff, Jezebel said, I'm going to kill that man. 
I'm going to kill him. I, and, and she sets out to destroy the prophet. And, and this is not strange and this is not odd. If you think that you can survive living with the devil, you're wrong. If you think you can survive communicating with spirits and the devil, you're wrong. You need to rebuke that voice. You need to rebuke that influence in your life. Hear what I'm saying? The enemy has never been your friend. See, I, I, I'm, I want to minister here. The enemy has never been your friend. Never has he ever been your friend. You have always been at odds with him. And as long as you were in chains and as long as you were captive, he didn't have to bother with you. But as soon as you get a little liberty, a little bit of victory, a little bit of Holy Ghost in your life, the war is back on. It's back on. But what did Elijah do? This dude called fire down from heaven. One enemy turns against him and he runs and he hides. He hides and he tells God, I want to die. I'm no better than my father. I want to die. Come on, some of you have been there. I know that because you've been in the pharmacy line. You're trying to handle your spiritual problem with a prescription. But luckily, he did sit down and he prayed as he was telling God this. Some of you, you, you may be down, but if you can focus your energy instead of complaining and giving up, you may want to give up, but instead just take it to the Lord in prayer. Lord, I'm about to give up. Lord, I don't even want to live. God, would you do something in my life? God, could you help me? God, just take me out of my misery. Let me tell you something. He can take you out of misery. He can take your feet out of the trap that you're in. He had given up on living. He gave up on his ministry, and he gave up on his anointing. But thank God he didn't give up on the man of God. The Bible says, as he slept, an angel of the Lord touched him, fed him, and put him on a fast. We're on a 21-day fast here. God sent the angel to say, here, buddy, you better eat up. Because you're about to go into a wilderness, and you ain't going to eat for 40 days. 40 days, and I'm going to show you what's really going on. Then as he slept, he was fed, he was blessed. God told him four things when he got on his fast. Listen to this, four things. Four things, and I want you to hear every one of them. God showed him that he was not necessarily in all the hype. See, a lot of times you don't think God's working in your life because you don't, somebody isn't like uh, putting you on the spot or somebody hadn't sent you a get well card or somebody had, if, if, the, if the world around you don't know what you're going through, unless God tells them, they don't know. And sometimes God's told them and all they know to do is pray. But just because God hasn't sent you a pity party doesn't mean that you should give up. Okay? God said, listen, the earthquake, the fire, the wind, baby, I'm not in those things. I'm in a still, small voice. When you get depressed, when you get down, and you get discouraged, listen for the voice of God. Sister Bean called me the other day. It was like Monday, and I was all stressed out at work. Was it not? All been out of shape. And uh, I was in my car. My, we didn't have power in the office. It was about 30 degrees. I was freezing to death working in there in the field. I went out to warm up my truck. I was stressed out. She called me. A, a, a minute or so after I got off the phone, Brother Shane sent me a text. He said, Brother, I don't know why, but I'm praying for you right now. Get alone with God. Get alone in a place where you can hear from God, and he will speak to you. The next couple things are equally as important. The next thing God told him was, baby, you can't do this on your own. I want you to go anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, but you, because you can't handle her. You cannot handle Jezebel, so I've got somebody anointed that we're going to handle her for you. Then he said, I want you to go anoint Elisha to be the prophet in your stead. Hear what I'm saying. And then the last thing he said, quit saying you're alone. He said, I've got 7,000 in Israel, those whose knees have not bowed. And there's a reason I've come to tell you that this morning. Depression. Let me help you. We all get depressed. 
I get depressed. My wife knows when I'm down. But I do not telegraph it, and I don't advertise it, and I sure don't go medicating it with some foolishness. Now, there may be reasons why you're depressed. Maybe you do need some medicine. But I know when I'm under a spiritual attack that's bringing me down. I know what it is. I've learned to be sensitive to it, and I will pray about it. I'll seek the Lord for it. I'll try not to have all with my brother or sister when I'm down. I'll learn to love them. I'll learn to pray for them. Let me tell you why. What you have done is you've isolated yourself. You've been like Elijah and you've thought it's just me and my family and we're the only ones and I'm doing it all by myself and I don't fit in. I rebuke that spirit of isolation. I've watched people isolate from the family of God. They've all backslid. Rest is good, but recognize the difference in resting and retreating. Know whether or not you've got alone with God or you've tried to get away from God. Mm -hmm. Know whether or not you've got in the secret place of the Most High or you've done like Jonah and you ran off on some boat to get away. Hmm? you got to stay connected with the body. You cannot break your bondage by continuing to do what you're doing. You're getting worse. There is a sister here, and I could speak your name out right now, and most folks wouldn't even know it. But you battle depression, you battle this spirit, and you isolate from the body. I rebuke that spirit in your life. I rebuke that spirit in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. And God can deliver you from it this morning. If you'll stand up and say, it's me, I want help. God can do it. You can interrupt me at any time. How you respond to the voice of God today is going to determine how you move forward. Right now, you can be delivered by that spirit of depression that you own. You can be delivered from it. You can be set free. That awkwardness you feel right now, that tension you feel here, not because pastor is stopped and everybody don't know what to do, that is the spirit at war with the flesh. That's what that is. That's that flesh resisting the spirit. You can be set at liberty. And I have ever since New Year's, I have been working, and Christmas, I have been working against this in the church. I've been, the Lord has had it on my life. That my mind and my spirit, the spirit of isolationism. You cannot survive if you cut off from the body. You will not survive. You will not survive. You will not survive. I want to go back to what I was preaching earlier. There's another individual in the church this morning. In your heart of hearts, you want to do right. In your heart of hearts, you want to live for God. But you are comfortable doing what you're doing. You're comfortable living the way you're living. Hmm. You're going with the flow. And, in, in your, and I'm going to go back to everything I've just preached. In your spirit you say, I wish my family around me would just get saved and it would be easier on me. I'm going to go back to what I said. Pharaoh is not voluntarily going to allow the people to go. Pharaoh is not going to release the Israelites except the hand of the Lord breaks his hold. But you've got to be ready to get up out. The anointing of God will break the hold that is in your life, and I'm speaking this to you in the Holy Ghost. The anointing, young lady, a young lady in the church, the anointing of God will break the yoke that you're under. The anointing of God will break the yoke that you're under, but you have got to, you've got to start first. You've got to start first. You've got to be willing to get up and get out. Is there anybody here this morning that's ready yet to say, I need prayer, it's me. If you're not, I'm going to keep moving. Sister, come, sister, come forward. Hold on, hold on one at a time. And I'm going to say this. You're not the only one. There's another God's put on my heart. Very specific young lady, but we're going to pray for you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray God against every spirit. Sister, was it a spirit of depression?
Or was it the spirit of not struggling to live for God? All right, in the name of Jesus, we come right now. Lord, and we bind that spirit. We bind that spirit that would hold her back. God, we ask, Lord, that you would strengthen her. God, give her the strength to stand up. God, and be a praiser, be a worshiper. Let the Holy Ghost energize her spirit. Lord, I rebuke every spirit of carnality. I rebuke a spirit, Lord, that would come in her life and try to control her. In the name of Jesus, sister, make up your mind right now. You're going to be different. You make up your mind right now, you're going to walk holy. Make up your mind, you're going to walk in the name of Jesus according to the power of his spirit and his word. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There's another young sister in here. You're battling the same thing. And you may not be ready to say it yet. You, sister, which one are you battling? Both. Come on up here. What's your name? Amber. Amber. I'm the pastor. Yeah, that's right. Sister, I want a couple sisters up here to pray for her. Amber, everything I've said this morning, God wants to deliver people from. Amen. The Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. The enemy wants to come against us like a flood. But when he does, the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a banner. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke that. In the name of Jesus, I pray, God, that the power of the Holy Ghost will begin to fall. Sister, lift your hands. I want you just to raise your hands all the way up in surrender. Just let free every inhibition. Open your mouth and begin to love God. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Amber, begin to tell him that I love you, Jesus. I rebuke a spirit of fear and depression. I rebuke anxiety. Lord, in the name of, that's it. There's a spirit of liberty that's coming upon your mouth right now. There's a spirit of the Holy Ghost that's beginning to fall. Jesus, fill her with your spirit. Right now, right now, God is about to fill that lady with the Holy Ghost. And shackles are going to fall. Come on, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet right now and begin to praise God. Watch the power of the Holy Ghost fall. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We speak against oppression. We speak against anxiety. As she's praying right now, I'm going to help somebody else. I'm going to put somebody else on the spot. The lady that the Lord has spoke to me about your depression is not one of these that's standing in this altar right now. And the other young lady's not one of these either. And let that begin to narrow you down. If you're going to say, I, God, are you talking to me? He's, you're still out there. You're still out there. I'm not going to move forward until she's full of the Holy Ghost. Until she's full of the Spirit. Come on, church, lift your hands and pray. We got to learn how to war. We got to learn how to fight. The Holy Ghost is going to fall. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we bind every spirit of oppression. We bind every spirit that will sin that would come upon her. All right. Even when she finishes praying, y'all young, y'all ladies stand there around her, stay there with her, and then just bring her into the fold right then. Listen to this. Now I'm going to speak to something else. And y'all know this is not my style of ministry, so this is how I'm ministering. It's got to be God. It's got to be God. Drugs, alcohol, partying, pornography, violent behavior, mental bondage from spirits. Brother Bean, come up here, bring the pistol with me. I want y'all to pay close attention to what we're going to do. I'm going to read a scripture to you. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 22. Y'all ready for the word? Y'all ready? Abstain from all appearance of evil. All right, everybody, you watching? I'm the bad guy. We're going to pretend he's a soldier or a policeman, right? And the rules of our engagement are such, he cannot fire at me until I become a threat, right? That's the rules of engagement. He knows I've got a gun. I'm a bad guy. I've got a gun. Okay? But he can't shoot me till I become a threat. Tell me to lay down my arm.
I tell you what, we're going to add, we're going to add a second one, okay? Don't, before we do the last one. Instead, instead of asking me to lay down my arms, he's just going to come disarm me. Come disarm me. You see that? Now watch this. Now, as soon, Brother Bean, as I become a threat, a spiritual threat. Now we're thinking in the spirit right now. As soon as you know I'm a threat, I want you to take me out. As soon. You didn't wait on me to shoot. As soon, do it again. As soon as I become a threat, stop me. You see, you see the difference? The devil don't fight fair. The devil don't fight fair. The devil don't play by your rules. You've got to abstain from all appearance of evil. Now hold on just a minute. Hold on just a minute. I want you to close your eyes right now. This brother, brother and I talked about, brother, come here. I don't, I, if I say something that's a lie that I didn't say, I want you to strike me down. Both hands. Strike me down if I make up. In the office this morning, he was telling me about some things, and I said, you know, the Lord impressed on me yesterday as I was working on my fence. And I thought, I'll make sure he don't strike me down. I'm watching. People struggling. And, they're, and, and people today are saying, you know, this or that, and living this or that way. And, and I think back 10 years ago, 10 years ago, they would have stood on their conviction and on that word of God with everything in their power. But you, you see, the enemy has told them a lie. The enemy has told them that he's opened their eyes. Just like he did to Eve. The only thing that their eyes were open to was a world of carnality. God forbid that 10 years from now I'm standing here not preaching the same doctrine I preach today. Don't wait around until you realize that you've gotten in trouble before you decide to wake up spiritually. Don't get close to the enemy of your life before you realize that you're in danger. It is too long. If you wait too long to flee or you wait too long to abstain, the damage may be done. It could be too late. You could have scars. You could die from your drug addiction. You could lose your family to your addiction to pornography. You could lose your job to that. If you have an addiction to gambling, you could lose your job. You could lose your savings. You can lose out with God. So as I tell you this, when you're flirting with these spirits around you, you better stay away or be prepared to die. You've got to kill the enemy before he becomes a threat to your life. And I'm going to say this to some others now. Me and my dad, Brother Rick Crowder, was speaking on the phone the other day about a situation. Don't joke around about sin. Don't hang around sin. Don't think about what it might be like to sin. Don't imagine what it might be like to have another woman. Don't imagine what it might be like to have another man. Don't joke around about when I used to be in the world how bad I was. Because what it is, if you're not careful, and it happens so easily, you can be relishing in your flesh. And pride will come back upon you. Pride will come back up. Don't think about what you used to be. If you used to be a drug addict, stop thinking about it. Stop talking about it. If you used to be in the world and in the bars and in the clubs, stop talking about it. 
Don't tell anybody about it. Are you proud of it? Rebuke it. Cast it away. Don't keep going back. Don't be what you used to be. Next, I'm going to speak to somebody here this morning. Music, you just come get ready for the altar. I'm getting ready to close. The last one. John 5 and 8. I actually preached a little on this Wednesday night, but something else I'm going to talk about today. This was the person that was at the well that had been, you know, lame for 38 years, right? 38 years. And he kept saying, I've got nobody to put me in the water, Jesus. He had like that Eeyore spirit, you know. Nobody to put me in the water. Nobody to take me in. Jesus did not care about that stupid water. He's the healer. The healer is here. The healer is here. He healed the man. We're going to go to verse 8. John 5 and 8. Jesus saith unto him, rise. Everybody say rise. Take up thy bed and walk. I get why Jesus said rise because you can't walk, Brother Johnny, until you're saved. If you ever tried to walk sitting down, it looks so weird. You'll pull a leg muscle. Obviously, if God's going to heal you of being lame, he wants you to walk. I get why he said that. But if you'll notice, everybody listen. Everybody, no looking around. No, no walking around. Jesus said, get your bed too. You know why Jesus said, get that bed? Listen, because Jesus was telling him in a very nice way, you don't have any reason to go back. You have no reason to go back there. So take up your bed and go home. Take up your bed and get to church. Take up your bed and get back in the ministry. Oh, hear me somebody. Take up your bed and get out of the whorehouse. Take up your bed, get out of the drug house. Take up your bed and get out of debtor's court. Take up your bed. Hear me, somebody. Take up your bed and get out of misery. Take up your bed. Get out of depression. Don't keep going back to what God brought you out of. Let me help you. Stop being your own worst enemy. Got this for somebody else right now. God wants to use you, but you're your own worst enemy. You get in your own way. You stumble over your own self. You stumble over your own self. Next thing, this is for one other person. Then I promise we're about to make the altar call. This is for an elder. An, an older person. Older person. I really feel this in my spirit. You've had some tough things happen in your life. You've had some things that have hurt you. Set you back. It happens. Life happens to all of us. But you're not where you used to be in God. And your commitment is waning. Because things are getting in your way. I'm reminded about, you know, the whole if the, if the ox goes in the ditch on the Sabbath, you know, we get it out, right? But the enemy has got a whole head of cattle, a whole flock of them. And he's lined them up one after one after one. And it keeps hindering you. So it's either time to have a barbecue. Help me, somebody. Or it's time to fill up the ditch. Either one, it's up to you. Either you get rid of the cows that keep going in the ditch. Or Brother Johnny, we can save the cows and fill up the ditch. Whatever's hindering you, you need to devise a way to get back where God wants you to be. Amen. Church, we're about to open these altars. If you're not standing, stand. I've spoke to some people here today. I'm going to go ahead and tell you the ones I spoke to about... Getting up out of sin, you hadn't came. Who God's put on my heart. And one that's battling depression. And maybe battling it secretly. Battling it's pulling you away from God. Because you're chasing it. You're 
feeding them. You've not moved yet. And that's troubling me. It's troubling me because the enemy sees you and he desires you. He desires you because of who you are in the kingdom. And because of what God has done in your life, he wants to destroy you. Oh, Jesus, I pray, God, that your power would move somebody this morning. Sister, just begin to sing. These altars are open. I want the saints of God to move. I believe somebody's going to walk out of this place today with full of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. By the evidence of speaking in other tongues, that they can be baptized in Jesus' name. People can be set at liberty in this house. Sister, we come against that spirit that come over you. Lord, I bind that in the name of Jesus. We pray, God, that you loose her mind right now. Lord, God, that you strengthen her. Lord, you gird her about with the helmet of salvation. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bind that in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray, God, that you give her the strength to walk up out of it. Come on, in the name of Jesus, ladies, pray for her. Come on, let's worship. Worship the Lord. Let His Spirit begin to stir you this morning. As you pray, there's one, the one that I've been reaching for about wanting to get up out of your lifestyle. God has moved you a little closer. God has moved you a little closer. You're ready to take a step. If you're here this morning and you're ready, I want you to come stand right there. And I'll know it's you. Go ahead, sister. God's going to deliver you if you'll take that step. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, 
must be saved. He calls you brownie. You don't know something I'm about to tell you about. All right? God has been wanting to fill you with the Holy Ghost since before you woke up this morning. Since before you woke up this morning. He did it. Filled you with his spirit. Hold on. Y'all, here, here's the thing y'all don't know. I called him early this morning. Early this morning. And said, brother, have you talked? Big, the big brown. He said, well, no. I said, is he coming to church? I said, I will try to get him because I, I want to see him filled with the Holy Ghost. Is that right? Is that what we said? A few minutes later, he texted me and said, did you call him because he just asked me for a ride? God's been after you since before you woke up this morning. been after you. Lastly, two things. I got to make a big announcement. When you walk out of this church today, the sweet ladies of the church have some spaghetti dinner on sale. Do they, Sister Bean, are these the ones with me or without me? All right. At half price. So, they sold these to the community, okay? They sold these to the community this week for $8 a plate. Now, if you're on the meat fast, I understand. You're not going to be eating no meat and spaghetti. But if you're not on it, this is a judgment-free zone. I ain't going to judge you, but I'm going to expect you to buy a spaghetti plate with meat in it if you ain't on the fast. Is that all right? $8. And if you don't want, if you own the fast and just want the buttered noodles, because I know your kids love them buttered noodles. I wonder why we all get so fat just eating buttered noodles. Get the buttered noodles, I'll make her sell them at half price. All right, last thing. Last thing. I want to take just a minute. What are you about to tell me? Okay. I want to say this. Yesterday, our disaster relief effort ministry. 
went. Alex, Friday. You were there Friday. And then Saturday had Brother Jonathan and the Nick's family, children and all, at Alexander City, right? Right outside Alexander City. Church, listen, if you're wondering how do those people, how I, he can tell you all about it. Um, it. It's a lot of work. When these storms come around, sometimes you have things going on that you can't get away from. I understand that. But when they come up, he's always there. He's always there. This is a great ministry to be a part of. He's got good equipment, good tools, things like that. can be done very well, very safely. They'll take care of you, put you up, whatever, if it needs to be. But doing a great job. Our ACTS program, our Celebrate Recovery, our recovery-based program, had a tremendous group Thursday night. I'm so thankful God is opening doors, and he's about to open 1,050 more doors in the name of Jesus. We're about to send out flyers. Church, let's pray we're going to dismiss right now. Lord, in your name, Jesus, we come to you and ask, Lord, that you would touch every heart, God, that has heard today the word of the Lord. God, open their minds. Lord, and allow them to be free and separated from sin. Give them the strength and the faith to walk forward boldly. Out of sin and out of bondage, we give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. If you haven't been baptized in the water in Jesus' name, the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, you can do so today.